Hello, I'm Walt Meyer, the NSIDC DAC scientist, and I'm going to give you a brief overview of open altimetry. Open altimetry is a tool for discovery, exploration, and visualization of ISAT-2 and ISAT altimeter data. ISAT and ISAT-2 are NASA laser altimeter satellites, and uh, this tool will allow us to quickly and easily browse the data and investigate and explore the data uh, and visualize the data. Um, this will give a little bit more information here on the main page. Uh, it is a NASA-funded project, uh, Open Altimetry, and it's a collaboration between the National Snow and Ice Data Center, and NSIDC, the Scripps Institution of Oceanography, and the San Diego Supercomputer Center at the University of California in San Diego. So here is our entry into either ISAT-2 data or ISAT data. Um, and I will note that there is a quick start tutorial for both of these as well, which is a nice narration uh, uh, like this that will give you some features that I may not mention here uh, in a little more in-depth information. Um, but first, let's uh, jump in and go to the Browse ISAT2 data. So this is what the interface looks when you open it. There's a little message here, which I'll turn off because I will explain these. This gives you the uh, kind of equatorial view um, of ISAT2. Um, the green lines are the ground tracks for this day. Now you'll notice that uh, it's a polar orbit, so there was a lot more data uh, in the poles, and ISAT-2 as well as ISAT are polar orbiting satellites and are focused on the polar regions. Um, so you might be looking to either the Arctic uh, here to go to the Arctic view of this little globe uh, widget here, or the Antarctic. Um, I will bring it back to the Arctic for this uh, demonstration. Um, there's other uh, widgets here. Um, there's the info, which gives you some information on the base maps and some of the data products. Um, and these are actually the data products listed here um, with their short names. And if you scroll over these, it gives you kind of a more descriptive name, ATL07, sea ice height, um, for example. And then you can also click on product info, which gives you their full name and a brief introduction and then links to more information. Um, for this, I'm going to choose ATL07. When I click on that, you'll see here in the Arctic Ocean, these little yellow circles show up. That indicates where there is data um, and where we have uh, sea ice heights uh, and sea ice height values here. So that can give you a sense of where um, you would go to, to actually get data and where data is available. Um, and the reason why we don't have data everywhere is, uh, for example, clouds can block the surface um, we don't get good returns off the sea ice. And so, um, and you can see here, it's limited, of course, to the ocean areas and, and not over land. So going over here, um, as I uh, mentioned here, this is, this is the calendar, it's July 16th, 2020. Uh, that is the latest date at the moment of uh, data available within open altimetry. And that's the default date um, that is given uh, that is given the last day of data availability. Uh, so, but you can change the date by clicking in this interface here um, and turning that on and off. Um, you can also, uh, there's these others uh, information. Um, you can zoom to specific areas here, for example. Um, you can search by uh, name or country. You can actually put in Latin long points, uh, bounding boxes, um, or to a point that it will center on. Um, but you can interactively um, also zoom in by just clicking on the plus minus here. And you'll see here in the, in the lower left, as I do that, this gives you the scale uh, as well as your, your Latin long location of where the cursor is. And so zooming in further, and you can click here on the ground track. Now this gives you the track ID for this specific track. Um, there's about 1,380 tracks uh, over a 91-day repeat cycle. Um, and so this track, every 91 days, the satellite will follow this specific track. And there is, uh, here, if you click on this track, it gives you the dates of each 91-day interval of when this data was, when data was available, when the satellite flew over this track. Um, so that's useful if you want to compare, uh, for example, you know, two different dates in the exact same location, the exact same tracks. Um, 
as we zoom in closer, um, you'll start to see you can you can you can zoom in or zoom out. You can also use this little um, uh, search button here. You can select on that, and you can just uh, effectively draw a box, and it will zoom to that box region. So there we there we go. We just did that. Um, and when you zoom in close enough, what you see are actually instead of just uh, one line of, of uh, circles here, you see three. And that corresponds to the three pairs of beams on ISAT 2. Um, there are actually three pairs of beams uh, separated by about three kilometers. Um, and, and so this is, now as you zoom in closer, you can, you can distinguish between these. And the data are available from all three pairs. There are a, a weak beam and a strong beam uh, in each pair. Um, with the strong beam being uh, stronger energy, about four times the amount of energy. Um, and there are more details that, on the ISAT 2 on this that I won't go into here, um, but just to explain these, these three, uh, that, that you have these three uh, tracks here, or these three sets of circles. Um, and when you zoom in close enough, um, you, can, you can have the Select a Region button here, which before I get to that, um, let me show you uh, a couple of things here. This is the, uh, again, the location. This gives you the beams. So there are, again, three pairs of beams, six beams total. You can turn off uh, you know, beams if you'd like, um, and it will take those out of the, um, out of the visualization here. Um, particularly, let's see here, there we go. So you can see how they respond. I'll turn these, at least these, um, strong beams back on uh, because these are more relevant for sea ice. Um, so here we go. Um, so the other thing here you have um, the track. So like I said you can click on each track. Every track is being shown but you can check or uncheck whichever ones you'd like. Um, another nice feature here is uh, you can overlay or underlay uh, this MODIS true color composite. Uh, that comes from the NASA Gibbs system, real-time imagery. Um, and so this gives you a visualization of, of the surface um, underlying these tracks, where these tracks are. And you can see this is really nice because it shows you where the clouds are. This is clouds up here. Um, and you can see there's very little, very few returns up in this area. Whereas here, the sea ice is quite apparent. Um, and you can see quite clearly um, the flows of ice. And so this will help guide you um, to see if it's worth uh, exploring further if you're interested in the sea ice. Now a caveat here is that this is a, a, a daily composite um, and of course the clouds and the ice are moving around so it doesn't necessarily directly correspond um, to a specific track but it gives you a general sense of whether skies are clear or whether they're cloudy. Um, now Again, as you zoom in close enough, this little blue box uh, comes up called Select a Region here. Um, let me shut this off first. Um, select a Region, you can go and click on that, and then you can draw a box around uh, your area here uh, to look at some data. And I'll just take this right here. We got you know some tracks there. And then it pops up with this View Elevation or View Signal Photons. Um, I'm going to select here uh, elevation. This gives you the, this is the, essentially the ATL7 product. Um, the signal photons give you uh, the specific photon returns, um, but we can also look at those through here. So now coming in here, you get a little pop up window, and here is your elevation profile um, of the ATL sea ice height. And you can see, you can tug along here. This is for the three strong beams uh, that I mentioned. Um, you can you can zoom in or zoom out here um, to look at things more in more detail. Um, you can take this. You can print a chart, download it as PNG or JPEG or PDF. Um, you can view it in full screen. Full screen. Um, there is also the ability to take this data, download it as a CSV file. It gives you lat, long location and the elevation of, of each segment here. Uh, you can download. A segmented, a subsetted HDF file through NSIDC. Um, this does require uh, an Earth Data login to to do that, um, and you can acquire that through through NASA uh, through the NASA NASA Earth Data site. 
Um, there's also this API URL. Um, this is essentially a, an automated interface to uh, programmatically download the data. Um, I won't go into the more detail there, um, but from, some folks may uh, uh, you know, be interested in taking advantage of that. Um, you notice up here there's dates. Um, right now this is 716. Well, these, these are the dates for different, for the other uh, repeat tracks of this ground track. So you can actually toggle here um, to a different day. You'll notice uh, maybe in the background you can see that the actual screen changed. Um, so you can you can actually look at all the tracks in the history so far of the of the data record, um, and these will be added to as, as more data gets collected. Um, there's also here this ATL3 photon heights, so you can toggle, instead of the ATL7 elevation sea ice height, um, you can actually go to the photon heights. Um, this may take a, a second to load. So this gives you the, the photon heights. Um, now one thing here, what I did in, um, this gives you all the photons and, and these are land and, and going on to an ice sheet. Um, so you lose kind of the, um, the vertical resolution. So I'm just going to take cut that there um, and that should reset the zoom, hopefully. Well, let's see if that's working. There we go. Um, so that gives you a, a little more. And, and this gives you the, the confidence, the blue are high and the green are medium confidence, meaning we, we're we confident, it gives it confidence level of whether we're catching the surface or not. And there's low and there's noise and then buffer ones too. These are, these are default turned off because you probably don't want these. Um, but then you can also overlay um, an L3A product um, and I'm going to put the sea ice, uh, ice height again. Um, so this gives the actual data here Oops, it, uh, it's, a, it's a little dark here, but oh, there we go. Um, you can see um, the the overlay of uh, on the photon, so you can kind of see the relationship between the photon returns and then the height that's derived from that. Um, so uh, with that, um, and again, these are the different beams. You can turn these on or off. Gives you the total number of photons, total number of segments, uh, etc. Um, so again, this, this is a, a, just a really nice way to quickly investigate, explore, and visualize the data. Um, so coming back here, um, we again can uh, you go back out, look at uh, the overall um, area here. You can switch back to different um, ground tracks. And uh, so that's a, a quick overview of open altimetry. There's, uh, there's more that one can explore. Um, but at this point, I will uh, leave it here and uh, you're welcome to explore. And if you have questions or issues, you can contact the Open Altimetry team or also contact the uh, NSIDC, NSIDC DAC user services group uh, who can also potentially provide assistance. So thank you for your attention and I hope you found this helpful.